Environments where food is produced must be clean. Usually, the most significant sources of contamination are people, raw materials, water, and air. For the most part, food safety programs focus on everything but air quality. Yet air can be contaminated by viable microorganisms. Most food processing facilities use air conditioning and ventilation systems equipped with filters. They remove dust and excess moisture from the air. But if, for some reason, there are high levels of airborne bacteria, yeast, or molds, there will be a negative impact on product quality and shelf life. In this segment, you're going to learn about the essentials of air quality monitoring. I have with me Elizabeth Siao, the Quality Control Supervisor at Oliveri Foods, to find out about their air monitoring program. And, and how often do you do this? We do this monthly. Right. And how many sites do you do? How do you choose the sites? Examples would be like congestions area, a lot of uh, people flowing, whether or not they're close to the door area, uh, high sensitive area where there's a lot of handling going on. So do you use the zone system to, to figure out where you're going to put them? Yes. Um, can you remind me what those zones are? Level one is actually a high food contact area, right? You know, th which is a high sensitive area where product will be actually going to be on right. the the sites yeah. there. And level two is actually for uh, non food contact sites, but it's close to the food contact area. Right. And level three is actually any areas that's out of the food contact and non food contact, yeah. more like the panels, control panels, buttons that they right. touch. Yeah. And level four is actually an area where it's outside the production and packaging. So um, the warehouses maybe in the storage areas? Exactly, oh, and the lunchroom. Okay. And the lunchroom. Yes. Right. And you have all, you do all four zones? We do all four zones, level one, level two, level three, and level four. Do you find that your counts are higher in some areas than in other areas? Yeah, I think there's uh, not much of a difference, but there are still variations right. there. Okay, so you use a passive system, this the settle plate system, right? Yes. And that's the one that most companies use. Yes. What we do is we actually use a 3M Petri film. We use settle plates, that is we pour our agar onto the 3M plates, then we let it set for an hour, then later on we will have to bring it up to the production floor and packaging area and it's going to take 15 minutes for the air to you know to get settled right and then we're going to close up the 3m and then we're going to put it into the incubator there are two principal air monitoring modes active and passive passive monitoring is most commonly used settle plates or air plates are exposed to the air for 15 minutes. The film or plates are then placed in incubators to allow the organisms to grow. On the plus side, this is an inexpensive method. It's easy to do. On the downside, your sample is based on just those microorganisms that have sedimented out of the air and landed on the film's surface. You can also do active monitoring. An instrument is used to draw air through a particle collection system. This is more accurate because it doesn't rely on what is settled out of the air. This model uses a pre-sterilized impeller to pull the air in. It costs approximately $2,000, but you can rent one for about $40 a day from a testing laboratory such as Exova. The media for capturing deposits is set on a strip of cells which you can buy for about $6. You carefully put the strip into the chamber in an aseptic manner. Be sure not to contaminate the impeller by touching it with your hands or letting it touch any other surfaces. To start the monitoring process, you enter the length of time that you want the media exposed. I've set it for two minutes. If the environment was very sterile, I'd set it for more time, or if it's very dirty, for a shorter time. Here I'm using two types of strips. One is a total plate count strip that gives me a broad picture of the microorganisms in the air. The pink strip is to detect yeast and molds. When removing the media strip, hold it by the edges so you don't touch the media. You will also need to run a control for the same amount of time. In this case, I've run a control just outside the plant. The expectation would be that the air outside would be dirtier than in the plant 
where the air filters and air conditioning systems are cleaning the air. Different types of bacteria and yeast and mold require different temperatures for growth, so they are placed in different incubators. Just to note, I didn't re-sterilize the unit between the plant sample and the control, because after removing the media strip from the last test, I ran the impeller for a few minutes. The spinning blades threw off any remaining bacteria and mold particles, so they are essentially clean. The strips have now been incubated. The aerobic plate count strips for 48 hours at 38 degrees Celsius and the yeast and mold strips for three days at 20 degrees. Normally, three to five days are required to culture these. The bacteria that have landed on the film have grown into colonies which can now be seen and the dots counted. The results are as expected. The counts obtained in the processing area are significantly lower than the ones taken outside because of the plant's heating and ventilation system. And the counts obtained with the active system are higher than the ones taken by settle plates. How do you determine what high counts are? It is a little difficult and one should conduct baseline studies to see what is acceptable in your plant. Please note that readings will probably be higher in the summer than in a cold Canadian winter. Here is an example of a total plate count plate that has high counts. If you find that you are getting high counts at your facility, consider some selective plating with differential media. This will help you determine exactly what types of organisms are present so that you can take action to reduce or eliminate them. In this module, you've learned about the importance of air quality monitoring, considerations for determining the most useful plant locations to monitor, and you've also learned about both passive and active systems for taking air samples and the pros and cons of each. You've seen how to run various pieces of equipment and how to run the tests, including the important controls. If you would like to test your knowledge on air quality monitoring, take the test below. Don't worry, you can review the video and repeat the quiz if you need to. To receive a certificate of completion, you will need to complete the quizzes for all the modules in this series. Good luck! See you in the next module!